ಪ್ರಭುತವ ಮೂರತಿ ವಿನೋದಕಾರಿ ಪಲಪನ ವಿಸರೆ ನಹಿ ಜೋ ವಿಸಾರಿ ಜುಗಲ ಚರಣ ಸೋಲ ಚಿನ್ನ ಜೇಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೆ ರಹೋ ಅಮಾರಿಯೇಹ ಗಣೇಶಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ನೀಜೆ ಹರಿಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ನೀಜೆ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಭಗವಾನ್ ನೀಜೆ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಓ ಮೈರಿ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಆರ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಪಿರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜಿಪಾದ ಗುರುಜಿ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಸಂತೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಮೈ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಆನ್ ಅ ರೀಡ್ ಅ ಟಾಕ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಗುಣಾತಿತನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಸ್ ವಾತೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಆ ಮೂವ್ ಆನ್ ಸೊ ಪ್ರಕರಣ ಟು ವಾಟ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಹರೆ ಪಚೀ ವಳಿ ಸ್ವಾಮಿಯ ವಾತ ಕರೀ ಜೆ ಮಹಾರಾಜೆ ಅನಂತ ಪ್ರಕಾರಿ ವಾತ ಜೀವನ ಮೋಕ್ಷನ ಅರ್ಥೆ ಪ್ರವರ್ತಾವಿ ಛೆ ಪಣ ತೆಮಾ ಚಾರ ವಾತ ಛೆ ತೆ ತೋ ಜೀವನ ಜೀವನ ಛೆ ತೆ ಶೂ ತೊ ಏಕ ತೊ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಉಪಾಸನಾ ಬೀಜೂ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಆಜ್ಞಾ ತ್ರೀಜೂ ಮೋಟಾ ಏಕಾಂತಿಕ ಸಾಥೆ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ನೆ ಚೌಥೂ ಭಗವದಿ ಸಾಥೆ ಸೂರದ ಪನು ಎ ಚಾರ ವಾತ ತೊ ಜೀವನ ಜೀವನ ಛೆ ತೆ ತೆ ತೊ ಮೂಕ್ವಿ ಜ ನಹಿ ಬಸ್ ಆಕಡೀ ವಾತ ತೊಮಾರಿ ಛೆ ಹವೆ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಸ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ರೆಡ್ ಟು ಯು ಸದ್ಗುರು ಗುಣಾತಿನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಸ್ ವಾತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸಜ್ that there are four life sources for the soul but before we even get into that aspect let's talk about four major life sources for this human body first and foremost this body needs oxygen to survive that's number 1 number 2 right after oxygen this body needs water after water this body needs food and lastly this body needs clothing for weather and environmental changes just like how swami said in this talk that there are four life sources for the soul what first and foremost the upasna of bhagwan upasna meaning the whole method of worship how bhagwan is how he exactly is how his nature is second the agna agna meaning the commands of bhagwan third affection towards the ekantik satpurush meaning ekantik sathe priti and fourth is surat bhav meaning just a divine vision towards everyone else that they're not ordinary devotees or ordinary saints but they're divine just like how swami says in this talk there are four sources for the soul i just mentioned to you four sources for the human body water food clothing and oxygen now what up we're going to do today is these four are essential in just the order that i explained to you but according to swami's vato what is the most important what should we first acquire or what do we first need and then everything else comes well after researching and after understanding the first method or the first source of you can say uh life for the soul is ekantikma priti why meaning to have affection towards the ekantik satpurush this is the first and foremost thing that you need and this is the first and foremost thing that is necessary that will be compared to oxygen if we can put it into the human body form well if one did not have the association of an ekantik satpurush but had everything else then if one is encountered by adverse circumstances like kusang or some other kind of circumstance which is not suitable then one will fall from satsang but if one had affection towards such an ekantik satpurush 
then one would never fall. And all the other three attributes of Upasana, Agna, and Surat Bhav would increase, but they would not decrease. That's why affection for the Akantik Satpurush is in the role of oxygen for the body. Just like how the source is important, and without it, the human body cannot survive in the same way. Our atma, our soul, cannot survive without having ekantik or without having affection for the ekantik satpurush. Well, you're probably wondering, out of all these, why this? Well, let me tell you a small story. So, in the time of Sriji Maharaj, there was a devotee by the name of Sadasiu. Many of you, heard, many have heard of him. Now he was from the city of Kambat. Now Sadasi was from this, he was very, very wealthy and very rich man. So he decided to build a mansion. Just like how in this time, a mansion would be fully luxurious with the best furniture, the best interior and exterior decorations. In the same way, in that time it was called the Haveli. This is a mansion in the same way in this modern age. Sadasiu made an intricate haveli, a big mansion. And it was so expensive that it was the best mansion in that city area. This is how good the mansion was. So he was so proud of making this mansion that what he did was he wanted to invite Sadguru Gopan Swami to come and see this mansion to make it holy. Why? Because if an Ekantik Satpurush comes to any place, it's not considered a regular place anymore. It's considered a Tirth. In the same way, Sadasiu called Gopan Swami and wanted to call Gopan Swami to his mansion to see. So what he decided to do was go to Varodra, where Gopan Swami was re residing. So he went and he went to Vadodra, and there Gopan Swami was sitting. So Sadasiu humbly bowed down and sat before Swami. And then he said, Swami, I've made this great haveli, and I would like you to come and make it holy. And after that, he started describing the haveli that there's this many pillars and there's this many intricate carvings. Meaning he just went on and on just talking about the mansion. There was nothing else on his mind. So Gopan Swami observed his whole nature. And after that, Gopan Swami thought that in his mind that Sadasiu is bound by this mansion. He, is, he has some kind of attachment towards this mansion. So now I must break it somehow. If I don't break it, then he will not attain Akshardham. Because in Akshardham, there is no attachments, but only for God and His divine muktos. So, what had happened was, Gopan Swami thought that I have to teach Sadasiu a lesson. So, Gopan Swami started to preach to Sadasiu about how this world is going to vanish one day, how everything is made from dur, meaning dust, and everything... It's made right now, but once it burns, it's going to go back to ash and dur or dirt. So there's no point of attaching oneself to anything. Swami kept talking and talking and talking about this. So Sadasiu would listen for two hours, then he would go back. Then again, he would come the next day, listen for two hours, go back. This happened for one whole week. And finally, some a little change came in Sadasiu, but... At that time, a letter came from Kambat saying it was given to Gopan Swami. So Gopan Swami took it and read it, and it said that Sadasiu's mansion was burned down. So Gopan Swami did not show the letter to Sadasiu right away. Why? Because Sadasiu's understanding for everything is dirt and everything will vanish was not completely firm yet. Swami was associating with him slowly and slowly trying to help him gain this understanding. So Swami continued to talk that this world is going to vanish, it's going to be destroyed. And afterwards, after some time, Swami felt confident that Sadasiu 
has completely had no attachment for this uh, mansion anymore. So Swami took out the letter from underneath where, where he was sitting and just gave the letter to Sadasi. Sadasi read the letter and that's it. He put it away and he tore the paper apart and he said, that's fine, Swami, I understand. But if Swami was to give that letter to him at the time when he wasn't ready, then Sadasi would have it, a heart attack. Why? Because he still had attachment for the whole mansion. So the whole point is that the Ekantik Purush, the Ekantik Sat Purush, he showed Sadasio, or he showed, Gopan Swami showed Sadasio the way to become free from this vasna, from this desire that he had, in the same particular manner. The Ekantik Sat Purush, what he does, this is his job. He helps us destroy vasna for the world, but only if one had priti or one had affection for him, then he would help us. But if he did not have, if we don't have affection for such a purush, such an ekantik sat purush, then he would not be able to cure our disease. I've mentioned this before. The ekantik sat purush is a doctor, just like how we have medical doctors, just like how we have surgeons specialist in the form of surgery for the heart, specialist for the lungs, specialist for the brain. In the same way, the Akantik Satpurush is a specialist for the soul. What he does is he cures the disease, or if he has to, he amputates whatever disease one has in order to save that soul's life. In this story, we saw that Gopan Swami operated on Sadasio and successfully cut the infected part off. And after that, he saved uh, Sadasio's life. And Sadasio happily lived and then went to Akshardham. But if he did not associate with Gopan Swami, if he had not sat with Swami, if he did not have affection for Swami, then there, was no, there would be no way that his desire for his mansion would be cured. That's why I put the Ekantik Satpurush as number one out of all these four because if there's him, then there's everything. But if, there, if he's not there, then nothing is there. That's why he's the foundation to satsang. Moving on to the second one. Just like how oxygen is a necessary item for the human body, the second necessary item for the human body right after oxygen is water. There are many, many people that live without food. Even Jains live without food. They do upasas, they do fast, where they don't eat anything for months at a time. There is even yogis that do this where they do not intake any kind of food source and still live for months at a time. But without water, no human can survive. So water is the most essential element for all living beings, not only humans, but animals and every living organism, you can say. So for the second, I've put upasna. Right after having affection for the Ekantik Satpurush, if one would have, then one would understand upasna via his association. But the second one is upasna. The reason why I've selected it to be number two is because after understanding everything, after following the commands of Bhagwan, the main thing to do is to understand that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is the supreme lord of lords. That's it. There's nothing else to do. Guruji has a very good quote. It says, Saro parito ek maro mara che, meaning there's only one supreme lord, and that's my Bhagwan. Bhagwan meaning Bhagwan Swami Narayan. This is what we have to understand. There's many, many religions outside of this world or of this, in this sect, there's many other religions. Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Buddhist, everything. Yet, we've received a religion which completely is going parallel with not only the scriptures, but the philosophy of understanding 
that there is one supreme Lord is very clean and clear. It's seen and it's proven. Whereas in other religions, somehow through text and somehow through other scriptures, they do try to prove it in some way. But in the Swaminarayan religion, it's clean and cut. And one can see that through many, many scriptures and through the Vachnamrut proves that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is Sarvapati or supreme above and beyond everyone. Well, regarding that talk, one time Sadhguru Nityanand Swami was in Vartal. And at that time, the Satsangi Jivan, the, the, uh, the book was being written by Shatan Swami in Vartal at that time. And there was some kind of talk that came about. While Swami was writing, there was a talk about the supremacy of Bhagwan. Should it be written or not inside the book? So at that time, not everyone was clear and cut and understood that this is the Supreme Lord himself. So Bhagwan wanted to do a leela through Nityanand Swami. So at that time, everyone started disputing, everyone started fighting that, oh, Bhagwan Swami is just like Ram, Krishna, Vishnu, other avatars, but he is not supreme. Devotees and even some saints said this at that time. And on one side, Nityanand Swami said, no, Bhagwan is supreme. This Bhagwan you see is a supreme Lord of Lords himself. So Bhagwan was displaying and viewing everything. Bhagwan was seeing this. So what he did was in the courtyard was he sat down and then he drew two lines, two straight lines, five feet apart, parallel to one another. And then Bhagwan announced, whoever is on Nityanand Swami's side, please go to the right line, the line on my right. And whoever is against him and is on my side, go on the left. So Bhagwan was taking the side of the people who believe that Bhagwan Sriji Maharaj was like Ram Krishna Vishnu, just like that. Bhagwan was knowingly taking the side of those who were against his supremacy, just to test Nityanand Swami. So what had happened was, obviously Nityanand Swami was left alone, so Nityanand Swami was on this side alone, and everyone else, all the santos, all the devotees, about 50 of them, were on the left side. And there, Sri Jumarad said that Nityanand Swami, you're all alone. You're saying that I am the Supreme Lord of Lords. But all these people are saying that I am not the Lord of Lords. I am just compared to Krishna, Ram, all the avatars. I am not like them. Or I am just like them. He was saying that he's similar to them. So Nityan Swami said, Maharaj, whatever you say, but you're the Supreme Lord, and I don't, I don't care about anything else. So all the devotees and all the saints started bashing Swami with burnt words, saying that you're wrong. Even Bhagwan himself, even this Sri Maharaj himself is saying that he is not the Supreme Lord. Then how could you still be alone? You should come on our side. Nityan Swami said, no. This Bhagwan is the Supreme Lord of Lords. That's it. I don't have anything else to say. So Bhagwan got upset. Bhagwan was just acting. He was just acting. He wasn't really, he wasn't upset at all. Bhagwan was acting. So what he did was he excommunicated Nityanand Swami. Vimukkarya. He threw Nityanand Swami out of his religion and said, you get out of my religion. I don't want you here anymore. So Nityanand Swami humbly replied, ah, Maharaj, and went. So Nityan Swami started fasting. One day, two days, three days, seven days he fasted. On the eighth day, when no mind was changed, then Bhagwan himself knew, the all-knowing omniscient Bhagwan knew that Nityan Swami was fasting, he had not eaten or drank anything, and also that he was still strong on what he had believed. So he sent his santos to come and retrieve Nityanand Swami. And there Bhagwan became so pleased on him and told the whole crowd 
that Nityan Swami's understanding is correct and everyone else's understanding is false. Meaning, Nityan Swami's understanding was what? That this Sriji Maharaj is the Supreme Lord of Lords and he is not compared to any other avatars. So, after listening to that, everyone understood the philosophy of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. But, this compares to our story of Upasna. The reason why is because without understanding Bhagwan to be the Supreme, you would reach a different destination. Just think, suppose you had a post or you had to mail something and uh, there's a from and a to. The from is not so important because it's not regarding anything. It's just where it's coming from. But the to is very important to whoever and then the address. So when you write the address, the most important thing is writing in the number. The zip code can't be spelled wrong or it can't be numbered wrong. The state cannot be incorrect. And obviously the street number cannot be incorrect. But if one of those numbers is, instead of a two, there's a three, then the post will reach a different destination. In the same exact way, by understanding that this Bhagwan is like this, this Bhagwan is like this, one will go to that address. So if one wants to reach the supreme abode of Akshradham, which is beyond all other dhams or all, all of the realms, then one must get the correct address. The address is that this Lord, Bhagwan Swaminarayan, is the supreme of all supreme lords. So these are the first two sources that I wanted to discuss this week that first and foremost, just like how oxygen is the most vital and essential element for the human body, in the same way for the soul, having affection for the Ekantik Satpurush is most vital. Number two, just like right after oxygen, water is the most essential for the human body, in the same exact way, upasna for the soul is very essential. For number three and four, which is agna and surat bhav, we'll discuss that next week when we understand this vat further on. But now I would like to introduce Puja Rushi Swami, who will give his lecture. Varnive Sharamani Adarsanam Mandaha Saruchirananam Pujam Pujitam Suranarotamir Muda Dharmanandanam Ham Vichintai Sri Ganesham Maharajani Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj. Puja Guruji, Puja Bhagatji and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. <coughs> you look like very healthy, but suddenly you have some pain in your chest. Whether you have a uh, old age or you are younger, but still, you immediately contact a doctor. Even though you look like healthy, but still you have some problem in your heart. And that's why you immediately approach any specialist doctor for the heart. 
the doctor's duty is to cure your illness. But if you have pain in your heart and still you remain in your house and not contact any doctor, then even the doctor is your uncle. Still, doctor, your uncle cannot do anything for your illness because you have not informed him about your illness, about your pain. The same thing happened in the religion. As a spiritual aspirant, sometimes we perform our rituals, our daily puja, daily rituals, daily routine, well and good, but still, sometimes, even though we are performing all these things, we have some disturbing thoughts in our mind while meditating upon the form of God. Also, when we are engaged our, ourselves in the worshiping God, at the time, our mind cannot fix on the form of God and the other bad thoughts occur in our mind. These all kinds of disturbing thoughts or not or focusing on the form of Bhagwan, these all kinds of things are our illness. Also, sometimes some other illness like lust, anger, avarice, infatuation, ego, these all kinds of diseases happen and its symptoms reveal in our heart, our thought, our mind. So at the time, even though we are remain in the company of Sant, the Sant is the spiritual doctor. One's Guru is the spiritual doctor. And even though a spiritual aspirant stay and live with the Sant and Guru, but if he cannot or does not reveal his pain in the form of bad thoughts, reveal his pain, his illness, in the form of some inappropriate swabhav. How can Sant or Guru can give that sp spiritual patient the medicine in the form of spiritual attunement or uh, particular kinds of vows or niyams? But when spiritual patient just like us, we all are patient because we have a kind of illness in our heart, in our mind, even in our behavior, in our swabhav. If we reveal, if we disclose such bad things towards our guru or sant, at that time, sant or guru can give us the medicine in the form of some words of wisdom or some scriptural discourses or any other things. And to take medicine is the next thing. But first thing is to reveal our illness, our problems to our doctor is our primary and basic things. Now, the condition of the doctor, the second condition of doctor is that this is the first condition to reveal or disclose our pain, our illness to doctor. This is our first condition. The second condition of doctor is that strictly follow his advice. If you have diabetes and doctor advise you not to take sugar, not to eat any sweet, not to eat potatoes. So you should strictly follow the advice of doctor if you want to cure your illness in the form of diabetes. 
same thing happen in the spiritual world if we have a nature a bad nature of anger or ego and if we have once reveal our problem to our spiritual doctor in the form of puja guru ji and he has advised us not to come into contact with such things such problems or such persons and if we not follow that advice how can our problem will be solved so we should strictly follow the advice and also the third condition of the doctor to cure our illness that is the taking medicine regularly and exact um in exact exact measurement means if a uh, doctor gives us the liquid uh, medicine in liquid forms and he advises us to take medicine 10 ml i would uh, twice in a day so we should take the medicine exact form and exact appropriate time similarly if our spiritual master our spiritual doctor for the cure of our illness if he gives us some spiritual medicine in the form of some jab some tap means uh, penance or chanting bhagwan's name doing manasi puja doing dhyan or any kinds of other spiritual endeavor we should follow it strictly without any failure then in then we can come out from our problems our illness and we will become again healthy there are different kinds of doctors in the world for space for their speciality in particular part of the body some are dentist some are heart surgeon some are ent specialist so and so if you are you have a problem in your teeth and you approach any nearest or any uh, dentist you have in contact and you want to cleanse your teeth and you sit on in the chamber of dentist and you say please cleanse my teeth and you not open your mouth then how can dentist work on your teeth how can he cleanse your teeth similarly if we we have any kinds of bad nature bad thoughts bad things in our behavior in our life we should reveal and we should open it in front of our spiritual doctor means our guru and sant then he can cleanse our dirt our disease and he can make us pure let we see today let we meet a uh, one of the greatest heart surgeon of the world of swaminarayan history once upon a time jibai of the village lodika he was a very strong devotee of bhagwan swaminarayan he was the strong follower and disciple of sadguru goparanand swami he had no son and as he had no son but he has no any problem but some other devotees of the same village requested to goparanand swami swami our strong devotee jiba has no any son if you show your grace upon him and if you give him a son then that will become very good for all of us <coughs> goparanand swami deny but as the request come again and again he said okay no problem 
भगवान विल गिव हिम अ सन एंड आफ्टर सम टाइम जी बाय हैव सन एंड हिज नेम वॉज अभय सिंह ग्रेजुअली ही ग्रो अप इन वेरी लग्जरियस मैनर एंड वेरी वेरी रिचनेस ऑफ हिज फादर बिकॉज हिज फादर वॉज द किंग ऑफ द विलेज After passing his childhood, now Abhisi become a very young person. In his young age, what he did? He did not go to the temple. He did not perform any worship. He did not even believe in God, and he never, he never approach any saint. Not only this. but due to his bad company with his bad companion he always used to go into the jungle for the hunting hunting is his hobby but what happened to his father because his father was a very staunch devotee of bhagwan swaminarayan he did not like such kinds of bad things so this two person both are controversial and lived in the same house jiba had tried many times to change the mind and heart of his son abhay singh he had tried to convert his bad nature into good one but he was failed once there was a day of ekadashi on the day of ekadashi jibai had requested his son please today this is the pious day so this is the day of ekadashi and you should not go for hunting today and also you should not eat meat and not drink liquor or wine you just follow only for today and obviously say okay father we will take our lunch of fruits together so please wait for me i'm i'm just going for taking some uh, fruits for both of us and obviously went out from the house obviously went into the jungle and he saw a group of birds means and when he saw the group of birds on the tree he shot out from his arrow one by one and he had cut out a tongue of pigeons and he collected 12 means dozens of tongues in a plate and he came out in house he had covered the plate with cloth <coughs> he invited his father to the dining table with this food this is the food for the not for the real fruit and when jibai come to take the lunch with his son on the day of ekadashi and when obesi unveil the dish of a tiny tongue of the birds jibe was very very amazed and he had very pain in his heart for a while jibe fell down on the earth and became unconscious still obviously has no any feelings or no any uh, good feelings for his father not he had any sorrow or pain for his misbehaving and he ate all these tongues of pigeons and after eating after finishing his lunch he again 
went out from his hut for hunting. On the other hand, other side, when Jibai came in conscious, he decided to renounce his house, renounce his own son, renounce his wealth and everything. And as a part of renunciation, he left his home and he went to Gopalan Swami, who was at that time near a village. And <clears throat> he pleaded to Gopalan Swami, Swami, please, I cannot live more in my house and describe all the incidents, what was happened on the day of Ekadasi. Jiva has described all the bad natures, bad habits of his son to Gopalan and Swami. Gopalan and Swami say, no problem. All will be good in short time. With the Sankalp of Gopalan and Swami, Abhaisi could not find any rabbit or any deer, so that in the search of in the search of any animal for hunting, he ran for here and there, and after tiring, he come in he came in the village where Gopan Swami was stay and his father was also there. But here he came for the search of water because he was very thirsty and uh, he was very tired. When he approached at the same place where Gopanan Swami was seated, Jiba, his father, introduced his son to Gopanan Swami. Gopanan Swami welcomed Abhaisi and he asked, for how long you want to do these bad things? At the same time, Abhaisi could not say anything, but his heart automatically changed. His heart felt some unknown feelings, which he had never felt anywhere and in any time. This is all because of Gopalan and Swami. Only the presence of Gopalan and Swami can do such things. It means change one's heart. If we talk about Gopalan and Swami with this incident, he is like a heart surgeon. Now today, the heart surgeon open one's heart and if it is needed then transplant other heart and keep the person live. Same thing happened in the life of Abhaisi. He was just dead. He was like an animal and that is why we can say it. he is just like a dead body because he he was not performing any human-like behavior. <clears throat> and only and only due to the mercy of Gopanan and Swami, grace of Gopanan and Swami, his heart was become changed and he became a pure devotee. This is the heart-changing process which today the doctor can operate the patient in operation theater and transplant the other heart, whether the heart is artificial, but still person can live. Same thing Gopanan Swami had done before to, the, to 100 years, but he had not opened one's heart. Just like laser surgery, today, without 
any operation doctors can cure many many illness of the patient with the help of laser surgery same thing with his only consciousness means only his sankalp gopanand swami had turn and change the heart of abhesi and due to the mercy of gopanand swami abhesi become a pure devotee a staunch follower of bhagwan swami narayan and he had forsake all the other bad habits and bad things now abhesi become a devotee and he had always perform meditation for 6 hours in this way uh abhesi a heart patient his heart is totally failed but due to gopanand swami's operation he had got new heart and a new feelings in the heart a new devotion for god in the heart and in this way he now living in the satsang living a spiritual life this is the all doing and this is the working of the heart surgeon this is not a small heart surgeon but the one of the greatest heart surgeon of the history history of swami narayan religion so now today we have three points from this katha first one is doctor has three condition and one of them is to reveal our pain our problem to doctors so we should disclose our heart and be frank with our guru so that we can always reveal our problems to our puja guruji and he can cure our problem the second point is that we should strictly follow the rules means our five religious vows we have to do we have to follow strictly without failure because that is our most essential things third one is to take medicine regularly means what the other things the other things means the other vows than the five religious vows that is our medicine which is prescribed specially for us by our spiritual doctor in the form of sant or puja guruji if we follow these three points we cannot become ill or if we have any illness we will become healthy we will remove our illness from the root this is the only method to become healthy in spiritual world in our religion so at this, at last let we say thank you to the doctor in the form of gopanand swami and now today i would like to say the same doctor we have in the form of our puja guruji our puja to because i have and if suppose you are also have witnessed many incidents in your nearby area or nearby uh, relation many drunkards change into a devotees uh, devotees many meat eater become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan many many bad persons also become a devotee only the ones come in the contact with puja guruji and santo that is why we should select a doctor in the form of our puja guruji and reveal our all the problems and follow his rules his advice and take his medicine hari krishna maharaj ni jay sri ganam maharaj ni jay श्री पतिम श्रीधरम सर्वेश्वर भक्तिधर्मात्मज वासुदेव 
माधवम केशवम कामदम कारणम स्वामीनारायणम नीलकंठम बजे